Often in math, we want to consider the relationship between two numbers that might not be equal to each other. So if you have 5 and 3, well I know 5 is not equal to 3, but we like to often say more than that. We, can, we write this symbol in math. It's an arrow pointing to the right. And this is, this is called an inequality symbol. So that little arrow is called an inequality symbol. And in this case, this is red from left to right. 5 is greater than 3. So we read that as 5 is greater than 3. And so we often represent that relationship on a number line. So we draw a number line. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I can see, well, we know 5 is larger than 3, but on a number line, the way that shows up is that 5 is to the right of 3. So whenever we see 5 greater than 3, we know that implies 5 is to the right of 3 on the number line. And likewise, if somebody writes this, that negative 5 well, is less than negative 2. So notice how the arrow points to the left. And again, we read from left to right. So negative 5 is less than negative 2. Is less than negative 2. On a number line, the way that's going to look is that, well, here's 0 negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Now if a number is less than an, another number, then this number is to the left of that number on the number line. That is, negative 5 is to the left of negative 2 on the number line, as I can see here. Now what if instead of working with two known numbers, what if one of the numbers is replaced with a variable? So let's say that you have for example, um, let's say that somebody writes this, x is greater than 2. So when I think about the numbers on a number line for which this is true, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, using the idea that we talked about above, which is that, well, if I replace x with a number, so for example, if I put a 3 where x is, so I'm looking at, you know, this instead, 3 is greater than 2. Well, that's true, right? Because 3 lies to the right of 2 on the number line. So if I put a 3 in there, the statement is true. And if I put a 4 in there, it's true as well. Because 4 is to the right of 2. In fact, it's true for a 5 and a 6. It's true for any number to the right of 2, right? Because any number, if I put any number here that's larger than 2, that number lies to the right of 2 on the number line. So when I think about numbers that make this true, that is when I go to solve this inequality, well, I can see it's true for every number that lies to the right of 2 on the number line. And what we do to indicate that is we introduce some shading. So we shade all the numbers that lie to the right of 2 to tell my reader, oh, you can plug any number larger than 2 into this and you have a statement that's true. Now, what about the number 2 itself? If I put a 2 in for x, is it true that 2 is greater than 2? No, that's not true, right? 3 is greater than 2, but 2 is not. So this is not true. Now I create a symbol to tell my reader that that's not true. And here's what we do. I put a parenthesis right on the 2 opening to the right. So what I have now is shading to the right of 2, but right on 2 I have a parenthesis to tell my reader that, well, you can plug in any number to the right of 2, but not 2 itself. This is what 
th this is how we, what we call graph the set or the collection of numbers that make this true. Okay? So we're graphing the set of numbers that make this inequality true. Let's try another one like that. So let's say we want to graph the following inequality. Let's say we have um, x is less than 3. So the way I think about this is, well, on a number line, if this is 0 and this is 1, 2, 3, and 4, so I'm thinking about numbers that are, well, when I plug them in here, that the numbers make the statement true. So for example, if I put a 2 in for x, I get a true statement, right? I get 2 is less than 3, and I know that's true. So 2, of course, is to the left of 3. And likewise, do you see how the statement is true if I put a 1 there as well? Because 1 is to the left of 3 as well. What about 2.5? Yes, this would be true. What about, oh, I don't know, how about 1.7? This would be true as well. In fact, as you're seeing, this is true for, for every number that's to the left of 3. So I don't want to shade to the right of 3. I want to shade to the left of 3. So I'm shading to the left of 3, and, and I'm telling my reader, hey, you can pick any number less than 3, but you can't pick the number 3 because 3 is not less than 3. 3 is equal to 3. So we put a parenthesis opening to the left like so. And that parenthesis tells my reader that you don't want to include 3. You want everything less than 3, just not 3 itself. But clearly there are going to be situations when we do want to include the number. So we have a different inequality symbol to indicate that. And let me give you an example of that. So we're going to have a new symbol. So if somebody writes this, well, let's say we want to graph um, x is greater than or equal to 1. And let's write, that, let's write that out the way we say that. x is greater than x is greater than and here's what's new, or equal to 1. Okay, so what's new is it's saying, well, you know, x can be greater than, we saw that before, but now, or equal to 1. So this x, well, it can, it can be greater than 1, like 2 and 3 and 4, but it can also be equal to 1. And so how, how does that f uh, affect the set of numbers on a number line? Well, here's 0 and 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, just like before, we want the numbers that are greater than 1, and those would be the numbers to the right of 1. So I shade like this. That part hasn't changed, right? I still want numbers that are greater than 1. But now I also want to include 1. And that's because 1 is equal to 1. So I don't want to draw a parenthesis on the 1, because if I do that, everybody's going to think that I don't want to include the 1. So we have a new symbol, and that new symbol is called the bracket, and it looks like this. So we put the bracket, so the bracket, we want to put that on the 1, opening to the right. And that bracket tells my reader, you want to include 1. So not only do you want the numbers greater than 1, you also want to include 1 itself. So it's no longer a parenthesis like we had in the previous example, right? Because a parenthesis is the way of telling the reader, don't include that number. The bracket says, oh, do include, in this case, the positive 1. Okay? And if we look at one more like that, if we go to graph, Let's say we have um, about x is less than or equal to negative 2. Well, when I go to graph that, 0, 
negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Well, I want, you know, this says x is less than or equal to negative 2. Well, I, I certainly still want the numbers that are less than negative 2. And wouldn't that be all the numbers to the left of negative 2? So I shade like this. And now I ask myself, do I also want to include ne negative 2 itself? And I do. Do you see why? Because this, is, this says x is less than or equal to negative 2. So we put a bracket on the negative 2 to indicate that you want to include the number negative 2 itself. That is, when you plug in negative 2, negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 2. Now negative 2 is not less than negative 2, but negative 2 is equal to negative 2, and that's why it gets included in this set. In the next video, we'll go ahead and solve more complicated inequalities, and we'll graph their solution sets like we did in this video.